Thank you very much, and thank you to the organizers for inviting us uh, to present what we're working on, which is pioneering the development of car macrophages. We've taken a very different approach from uh, a number of the people that you've heard from before and we'll hear from uh, later, uh, and I'd like to uh, go through that. So Charisma is a, Charisma is a, a relatively young company. It was founded by Sar Gill at uh, Penn uh, with his PhD candidate, uh, uh, Mike Klachinski, who's co-advised by Sar and Carl June. Uh, and uh, it was founded in 2016. Uh, we were, uh, it's all based around the car macrophage, which we believe is uh, uniquely suited for solid tumor indications. We also believe that we have potential across uh, other therapeutic categories, any place where you have protein aggregates where we can use the unique mechanism of action of a macrophage to, uh, to devour different cell types. Uh, the IP was licensed from Penn in 2017. We closed a Series A financing in June of this year, uh, 53 million from a, a great uh, syndicate of venture investors. Uh, the use of proceeds is directed at, in two main areas. One, to take our lead program uh, into the clinic. It's a HER2 car macrophage. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Uh, we believe we can enter the clinic uh, next year and establish safety and biologic proof of concept. Secondly, we want to take uh, our, our time and optimize the car macrophage discovery platform uh, which we think there are a number of things we can do to improve and, and create a Gen 2 uh, construct uh, and start building out a pipeline. So, so as you know, and I think it's been said before, solid tumor efficacy has been elusive. Uh, the CD19 CAR T's uh, have been very uh, uh, profound efficacy in hematologic malignancy, uh, rapid uh, success and, and approval, uh, but the, uh, the results with CAR T and solid tumors have been challenging to date. And uh, some of what uh, Janet had, had mentioned, billions of dollars are flowing into this space. A lot of that's directed at how can we improve CAR T and, and uh, other T cell uh, approaches like TCR. Uh, we approached it a little bit differently and said, why, so why are, are there challenges? And it's no surprise that, we, that some of them, access to the tumors is a challenge, and immunosuppressive tumor microenvironment is a challenge. So is there another approach? Is there another direction we can go? And so Mike's idea, and just as an aside, Mike's defending his, his uh, dissertation on Monday, uh, so he's pretty excited about that, and he'll be joining the company afterwards. Uh, but his idea was let's look at a different cell type and let's uh, focus on a myeloid uh, uh, cell, derived cell, the macrophage. And so looking at uh, the tumor microenvironment, you can see the macrophages are present at a much higher level than T cells. In fact, one of the most common cells outside the tumor cell in the tumor microenvironment are the macrophages. Obviously, it's a challenge because they're M2 polarized, but we'll get to that in, in a moment. But we do know that they will uh, traffic in, in, uh, to the site of the tumor. Secondly, it's a different uh, mechanism of action. Phagocytosis is the primary uh, mechanism of action. And in addition to that, there are professional antigen-presenting cells. So a different, uh, completely different approach from the, from the T cell-based therapies. So what, what Mike and Sar did is they started with a macrophage. It's uh, uh, standard apheresis. Uh, we we uh, harvest monocytes, differentiate into macrophages, and through the use of a viral vector, introduce a car uh, of the antigen target of choice, uh, producing an, an activated, polarized, uh, targeted uh, macrophage. This is very slow forward. Again, we believe that uh, car macrophages are uniquely suited for the treatment of solid tumors. One, uh, and I'll show you data backing these, all of these up, they will traffic to the site of the tumor. I think we have uh, strong evidence that they're, they're getting there. Secondly, uh, we can target and use a, a unique effector function, phagocytosis, that is unaffected by the, the uh, immunosuppressive environment. Uh, third, we are able to uh, put them into an anti-tumor polarization. They're M1 polarized by virtue of uh, our, our viral vector. Uh, and lastly, we believe that we will, we will be able to generate an adaptive immune response. So showing you some data uh, going through on each one of those. So this is just uh, some, uh, some mouse data where we've demonstrated that CAR macrophages can be re uh, actively re uh, recruited to the site of the tumor. And I'll just focus on the middle, uh, the middle slide. These are uh, uh, CAR macrophages administered through the tail vein. In red, you can see uh, the, the tumor mass, uh, and I'm sorry, the tumor mass here, and then you can see uh, the localization of our macrophages. So they are getting to uh, where we want them to go. 
when they arrive, uh, there's, there's two, two sets of data here. First, uh, we are on the left-hand side, we're showing that uh, CAR macrophages, but not control macrophages, will target uh, antigen-bearing tumor cells. And so you can see that here, the controls are not, uh, not phagocytosing cells, and our CAR macrophages are. Similarly, if you take CAR macrophages uh, and have target positive and target negative cells, they will phagocytose the target positive cells, but not the target negative cells. So they're getting there, they're, uh, they're binding the antigen of choice, and they are uh, phagocytosing. So how does that look in practice? So here is uh, just some images of a single macrophage over time, uh, macrophage in red, uh, tumor cell in green. And over the course of about uh, 12 to 16 hours, you can see that the macrophage will contact uh, the, the tumor cell. They'll engulf it, degrade it, break it down, reprocess and be ready uh, to, and repair and be ready to go after uh, another, uh, another tumor cell. And we have seen that uh, macrophages will uh, go after tumor cells in, uh, in serial. And here's a video of, uh, we're gonna play. There we go. So again, macrophages in red, tumor cells in green, and you can see that the, the macrophages will go after the tumor cells and go after uh, again and again. Uh, and so there, there's not just a, uh, a, a repair cycle, they can go after multiple uh, macrophages at, at once. In fact, if you look at, here's a couple of macrophages that have uh, phagocytose, multiple targets. We have uh, the one on, on the left here has, uh, I guess has six different tumor cells inside. The one on the right is our champion. He has 18 tumor cells inside. We call him Big Mac. And uh, so we're really pleased with him. We try to create more of him. But uh, how does that, so these are, these are great cell-based models. How does it work in, in, uh, uh, in animal models? And so in, in our mirroring system that we have, uh, obviously this is, is, is uh, just one set of data that, that we have and, and is directionally showing that we can uh, uh, mediate tumor uh, regression and extend survival. Uh, in the graphs, you can see uh, that uh, with no treatment or an untransduced uh, macrophage, uh, you see tumor growth uh, and in the tumor burden in a CAR macrophage uh, population goes down. Similarly, in the images that you see here, uh, you can see that untreated and empty vector uh, end up, uh, you see a uh, tumor mass growing and very little tumor growth in, uh, in the CAR macrophage population. So I, I had mentioned that we maintain M1 polarization uh, and this is uh, a serendipitous uh, outcome, we believe, based on uh, our viral vector. Our viral vector does damage the macrophage and somehow locks it into an M1 polarization. More work needs to be done to find out exactly why that's occurring. But uh, clearly that's a, a, a great benefit uh, versus the, the typical M2, uh, uh, M2 macrophages in the tumor microenvironment. We did a, a heat map looking at, at genes that are upregulated, and you can see here uh, the CAR macrophage population has a much higher uh, uh, level of gene expression for co-stimulatory ligands, uh, antigen processing pre uh, presentation, as well as MHC class 1-2 uh, molecules. So it's a, a directionally, it's demonstrating that we, that we are locked into that, that phenotype, uh, but importantly, it also suggests that we uh, should be superior at antigen presentation. So we did a, a model here where we tried to demonstrate enhanced T cell activation. Uh, and what we did is we uh, introduced CAR macrophages to NYESO1 uh, and then uh, co-cultured with uh, an NYESO1 CAR T. Uh, and you can see that the, the antigen-loaded control macrophages uh, were not very, well, so two, two things. CAR macrophages that were not loaded with the antigen didn't really uh, produce uh, much in the way of, of, of T cells. Uh, Antigen-loaded. Uh, uh, control macrophages uh, didn't really do much as well, but the antigen-loaded CAR macrophages were able to uh, introduce uh, quite a, a T-cell response. So we believe that directionally this is, is suggestive that we should be uh, seeing uh, superior antigen presentation be able to adapt, mount an adaptive immune response. The, the next step would be to uh, go into either larger animal models or to the best animal model, which is the, is the human, and so uh, that is our, uh, the direction we're going. Our lead program. Our lead program is a HER2 uh, CAR macrophage. 
Uh, and uh, we are uh, currently in the process of producing uh, the, the, all the elements of the supply chain, uh, leading us to a, uh, an IND filing by mid next year. And we'll go into the clinic. It's a, it's a standard process, not unfamiliar to those that, are, that know the CAR-T process. The only difference is there's no expansion phase here. So our manufacturing cycle is about seven days. Uh, <clears throat> our phase one Our phase one study uh, will be in uh, metastatic and curable uh, 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 patients with uh, HER2 overexpression, so breast, ovarian, gastric. We're uh, currently looking at a, a basket design. 12 patients, open label. Uh, we, our primary objective, obviously, is, is safety, uh, uh, but we'll also be looking at a number of other uh, metrics, persistence and trafficking, uh, overall response, overall survival. Uh, though we're not, uh, as a first-gen product, we're really more focused on the, on the, the last set of information, which is the correlative uh, objectives, car persistence, M1 phenotype, uh, T cell infiltration, uh, tumor microenvironment, reprogramming. There's a lot of things that we want to demonstrate as a biologic proof of concept. And so we should, again, start that uh, in uh, Q3 next year as our target. So as I mentioned, the other uh, portion of our, our effort is directed at building a better macrophage. And so uh, we have a lot of efforts uh, or a lot of objectives that we can go after to look at improved car design, making it specific for macrophages. We can look at, at improved viral vectors. As, as I mentioned, the, the, our current vector does damage the, the macrophage. It helps in that it puts it into M1 polarization, but it also uh, it shortens the lifespan of the, of the uh, macrophage. We can look at cell of origin. Uh, macrophage, monocytes and macrophages are not uh, expandable, so is there another approach we can take? And there are other ways to uh, improve immune activation. There's, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip all the ways that we think that we can do this, but there are a number of different directions we're taking in the lab uh, where we can have Gen 2 and, and beyond uh, of our car macrophage. Obviously, this doesn't, uh, having a discovery engine is, is useless unless you start directing it uh, at some uh, some place, and so we are intent upon building out our pipeline beyond our, our HER2 lead. Uh, we don't have, currently don't have target ID and validation efforts, so we're, we're uh, seeking uh, assistance and partnership and, and ways to identify unique uh, antigen targets, uh, but we want to uh, build out a, a product development time uh, uh, portfolio in oncology. In addition, I mentioned that, that uh, CAR macrophages with their unique effector function should be able to de be deployed in other places where you want protein degradation. So you can think about accumulation of, of cells in the CNS uh, or, or proteins in the CNS. You can think in cardiovascular, fibrosis, a number of different areas. And so similarly, we'll be exploring ways to deploy this as, a, as a, another approach. And ideally, if, if things go well over the next couple of years, uh, we will be building out our pipeline. Uh, we have an early target that we haven't disclosed uh, beyond the HER2, uh, and uh, we want to drive that towards the clinic. We have another, uh, we would like to uh, build out, uh, again, other targets uh, in oncology, and we have some preliminary data on potential targets in cardiovascular and neurodegeneration. Thank you very much for your time, and I think I got us back on track.